Philips LF H 0595 is an elegantly designed mini cassette tape recorder from 1983. This system is designed to play mini cassettes which were also made by Philips themselves. I got this unit from eBay, effectively new and unused in the box. When I first tried it, it didn't seem to work, so I decided to take it apart to see what was going on. If you tried hitting the playback button without a tape in place, the unit would beep and make a tone. It turns out there's a small contact switch which is responsible for detecting a tape. With a shim in place, my expectation then was that playback would engage the motor and the gears. It seemed that the basic mechanics of the unit were good, and I could hear static across the playback head when the motor was engaged, but the motor just wasn't spinning. So I suspected there was something wrong with the power or the motor itself. Testing quickly with a multimeter, I was able to confirm that the motor was indeed receiving power but it just wasn't turning over. Looking at the back of the unit, I could see that there was indeed a band, although it was rather loose, attaching the motor to the playback assembly. I decided to take the motor out of the unit. I only had a little bit of trouble removing the C-clamps from the two posts, and then on unsoldering the motor. I regret not filming this, but I turned the motor a bit by hand and then connected it to a separate power supply, and I was quite delighted to see that the motor then started spinning. So it seemed like I'd loosened up something in the motor. It was really nice to see the motor engage and start playing back a tape of my dad's former recordings. Unfortunately, after reassembling the unit, I tested the recording function, and I found that the recording didn't seem to work, or at least it wasn't working as expected tape would be somewhat overwritten by new recordings, but there was no real sound being picked up by the microphone. I tried taking the unit apart again to investigate, but the numerous wires that connect the power of the microphone and the speaker are so brittle that they started to come off of the circuit board, and it was very difficult to strip those wires and then re-solder them back in place without breaking something else. So I decided to leave the recorder as is playback only, and I've made this recording on a separate unit, which happens thankfully to be working just fine. These are fun and intricate, interesting little mechanical devices, and it's been kind of fun going back and taking a look at some of these old recordings and getting one of these to work. Period. Yours very truly, etc.